scratch babble. 5,000 mile review. Now I turned 5,000 miles on the KLR 650 about three weeks ago. I'm at like 53 something right now. Don't get me wet truck. So a couple of caveats before I get started. Number one, this is my first motorcycle ever. Number two, I was riding for about six months as a new rider endorsing for a Harley Davidson. But I always knew this would be my first bike. I bought this in March of 2016. It is a 2015. So it's been my bike and my first bike for a year and seven months. So the perspective this review is coming at you from is from a new rider and also for a bike that has turned out to be my commuter with a small bit of trails with the small bit of trails mixed in really stinking windy as I cross the bridge for this beautiful view So anyway, this comes from the perspective of a new rider and someone who does mostly commuting on this bike, which is how it's set up, and I'm going to run over all the crap I've done to it as well. It's a cool day here in northwest Florida. We're right at 50 degrees. The wind's howling because the front came through yesterday, day before yesterday. In other words, perfect. As a commuter, this thing is awesome. No filtering uh, in Florida, so I can't review it from that standpoint. But as a daily commuter, this thing is great. Pretty much ride 12 months a year, got rain gear, got insulated pants should I need them. I've only used them once, and that was on a long winter ride. It was about 48 degrees all day. But as a daily commuter, this thing rocks. It has a couple shortcomings in that regard. There are times I wish there was more passing power. Otherwise, it's a perfect bike for commuting, especially the way I have it set up, which I'll show you in a little bit. As a first bike, regardless of what your intentions are to do with it, I think it's set up perfect for a beginning rider. The way it's geared, you cannot get in trouble on this bike, unless you're stupid. I had to make a quick stop at the uh, Harley Davidson Riding Academy, my morning show partner, Scott Mallory. I don't know if you can see him on this, but he's over there in the white helmet, making his way around the course for the first time, grabbing that front brake like we all did to start. Scott uh, did not have the same dream that I did, did about riding, but we do an event at our radio station over the holidays called Bikes or Bust. And basically we got our listeners to donate bikes to uh, us at Toys for Tots. And for the last two years, Scott has gone up in a scissor lift for 98 straight hours at a local shopping center where he lives in a tent and has a porta potty. And he stays up there trying to raise bikes. Just under a thousand bikes last year. Pretty amazing. And um, this year, leading up to the event, Gus, the owner of Emerald Coast Harley Davidson, came on our morning show and challenged Scott that if he went through the riding academy before Bikes or Bust, which is the last weekend in November, first couple days of December, that he would donate. Last year, Harley Davidson donated 30 bicycles. This year, he said if Scott Mallory went through the riding class, he would donate 65 minimum. But he had to have the course done and uh, before bikes are bust. And so he's out here doing it. Again, he's he didn't have the same dream I had. He's a little apprehensive. <laughs> and he was also kind of forced into it. But he's a good guy. He's a really good dad. And kids mean a lot to him. So here he is out here. And I'm hoping he enjoys it just even 10% as much as the rest of us enjoy riding but uh, kudos to my partner 
my intent was to since I live on the beach go to a beautiful beach area to to do this 5,000 mile review but it is so windy today I think I'm gonna go find a place regardless of what it looks like and uh, just to get a wind block so I'll catch up with you there all right let's get to it 5,000 mile review I'm at about 5,300 now on the KLR 650 2015 bought in March of 2016 so I've had it about a year and seven months first bike I've ever ridden well not the first bike I've ever ridden but first bike I've owned and it has been a great first bike and it has been a great overall bike I'm gonna get my shadow not very professional but this isn't about the video stock front tire at 5300 miles it's needing a replacement Moving down to the back tire, though, I replaced at like 3,000 miles with the 705s, 704s, whatever, Shinkos, 705s. And I can tell you this, if you're like me and you do 90% on-road, as this is a commuter, 705s are great. But I can tell you, when you hit gravel, you can definitely tell the difference between the stock tire and the 705. I haven't had it off-road yet. On the front of the bike, recently I upgraded to the Madstad uh, 18. It's in light smoke. I got it from a guy off of eBay, so I saved a few bucks, not a ton. If I had it to do over, would I get the clear? Probably, although the smoke has not been an issue at all. The stock screen, awesome in summer. But... It shoves wind right up under your uh, face mask, right up under your chin bar. So that made it a little tough to vlog sometimes. I ended up having to go to a, a couple dead cats to put on either end of my little Sony mic. The difference this has made in the cold and the rain is unreal. I can ride to work in 45 degree weather with my mask up and uh, with my shield up and just sunglasses on, or in my case it's dark so I'm using basically work glasses and uh, I'm fine it's the best upgrade I did on this bike now keep in mind every one of these upgrades I'm going to show you I did just because I needed them as time went along the first thing I added to this bike when I got it because I needed some kind of drive dry storage was this MGO trunk I'm going to try to swivel around so I'm not right into the sun. I put those bottom reflectors on it because the top one doesn't even reflect. Here's a little plug for Everride. This MGO trunk, less than 100 bucks. I've had zero issues with it. I've even used it off-road. Uh, the plastic plate, I've heard complaints about that it's broken. I have not had that issue. I just made sure that when I bolted it to the stock plate that everything was really level. Because if you've got your levels, um, if it's not level, in essence, one side you have bolted down a little bit tighter than the other, then that creates stress on the plate. So I used a level, made sure it was good and flat across, and it's been a great addition. The thing I added was the Nelson Rig tank bag. I originally had the 1045, which is smaller. I went up to the 1050 so I could have more storage capacity because I, I, I'm that guy. You know, when I'm going somewhere, I want pretty much everything at my fingertips and I wanted something big enough I could shove a DSLR in comes with a separate rain cover the rain cover doesn't have a zip in uh, option so you have to literally take the thing off and put it back on every time you want to get in it but if you're going to be traveling and you just need something to keep you dry it works great and it saves a lot of money I guess I need to you know do the obligatory 12 volt originally I had a 12 volt and then two USBs in one unit and I my battery wasn't staying charged. I was having issues, and I've read several places that, you know, there's always current going through, and if you let the bike sit for any length of time, you could kill the battery. I don't know if that's true or not, so I just went to the straight cigarette lighter plug-in, and then I've got a plug-in USB adapter. But mostly, I carry with me always... Let me get it out of my thing here. That's a tr big charge bank. It's got a high-speed charger, a low-speed charger. It charges my phone like six times. I've got a Galaxy S8 five times. 
so I use that a lot as well as charge. I can charge so many things on that thing if I need to. GoPros, phone, uh, my comm unit. I can charge all that stuff while I'm riding. I haven't done anything with the handguards because I haven't had the need. Even the off-road around here is in sand, so I haven't felt the need. But that's my third set of mirrors, uh, the stock mirrors first. And then I went to these uh, aftermarkets that I really liked a lot that, again, I got from eBay. You guys have probably seen the links to them all. And I'm going to put links to all this stuff. The stuff I had on here, the stuff that uh, I ended up replacing, and the stuff I have now. Anyway, the eBay mirrors were awesome. I liked them. Great field of view. The problem was they stuck out farther than the, than the grips. So if you went down, like in sand, like I did many times, they broke right off. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on the double take mirrors and these are a good compromise I don't have quite the field of view I had on the others I don't know if I would have gone with it should have gone with the circular mirror rather rather than this adventure mirror it looks okay it's you know it's it does what I need it to do if I go off road I can fold them in and that's the main function I had for those ram mount for my phone I originally had it mounted there but I didn't like it there because it was blocking out my uh, RPM and my neutral light. So I just recently got this claw and moved it to there, and it's so much better. Uh, I can see my full dash. It's great. And I'm going to save that for a cup holder. I need a cup holder. Don't judge. The heated grips have been worth every penny. They're awesome. These Oxford heated grips, they shut off automatically if it doesn't sense motion for five minutes. They get really hot. I use these a ton. Now, the backs of your hands, they still get cold. In really cold weather, you need to wear some gloves that are going to keep the back of your hand warm. Yes, the hand guards help with wind, and the windshield actually deflects wind farther around the uh, hand guards obviously than the stock did but Oxford heated grips are awesome SW Motec crash bars these things I literally dropped as you can see dropped this bike the day I put them on for the first for the first time they've been great no buzz they come with rubber spacers so that you can um, keep the vibration down. I've had no issues with these things and they've done their job. A little more expensive but they fit freaking great. Also went with the cheap aftermarket foot pegs. The stockers, even if you're not off-road, they just, they don't feel right. <laughs> they don't feel right and they get very slick when they're wet. And also one of the first things I did, I was a new rider I'd never ridden a single cylinder, even though I'd ridden a couple Harleys before, I'd never rent, ridden a single cylinder. And Harleys vibrate a lot when you're sitting still, but once you get rolling, the thing smooths right out, and especially as the speeds get greater. Well, not so with the, with the thumper. So I went to the 16 tooth sprocket. That smoothed things out quite a bit at speed. I also added grip puppies to the grips. That smooths things out. Now keep in mind, I did both of these things relatively early in ownership of this bike as a new rider. Would those same things bug me now? I don't know. I'm not going to go back to find out. I do know that the 16.2 sprocket lowered my RPMs by uh, 500. So it does make a difference, especially if you spend any time at 70, 75 miles an hour. It makes a big difference. Again, though, the biggest difference at speed has been this windshield. The, the original windshield, when you were going 60, it felt like 80. This one, when you're going 70, it feels like 50. It's worth every penny. As I first mentioned, I had this thing set up to commute. If I go off-road, I actually pull all the bags off, and I've got a waterproof uh, backpack that I just cargo net to the back, and it's perfect. But the last thing, I needed a little more storage. A daily commuter also means, you know, you do some errands. <laughs> or you go for a pleasure ride, and you're, you've got a pillion with you, and you want to be able to store some stuff. And Although the MGO does a good job 
for smaller stuff I can't put a helmet in it. I can barely put it, uh, a big thick jacket in it so I needed extra storage. So I got the Tusk medium panniers. If I had to do it over again I was so concerned when I looked online and looked at other people's photographs that the large Tusk just would look way too big for the bike and there's no way to explain to you how in in this video either because I know these things look big and they're the mediums in the video but they're not the larges overall don't look that much difference but they give you just a little more space I have a 17 inch laptop that sometimes I need to commute with and if I'd gotten a larger box it would have fit in there just slid right in as it is now I have to go put it in caddy corner and then like maneuver it a little bit to get it to fit in but the test pan here is for 365 bucks I think I paid for you just can't beat it and then last well next to last as far as stuff I've done to the bike or farkles who would have known that the red and black and white shark teeth would look so damn good on a green KLR? And something I've mentioned a couple times on forums, the best Farkle though, worth every penny that I spent on it for this KLR 650, is a climber's manual. It has been invaluable in several situations. I've only really changed my oil and replaced the sprocket. I didn't put my tires on, but everything that's been done mechanically which is very little I've done myself I've adjusted the idle uh, which is really simple but adjusting the choke is not as simple uh, but I did all that found out how to do it all in the climbers and uh, I'm gonna do change out my do hickey here this year and I'm also going to uh, check my valves and I'm gonna do all that myself because I feel like I can't all right coming back full circle what do you want to know about this bike Gas mileage varies tremendously depending on how you ride. On a tank of gas, I've gone as much as 230 miles without hitting reserve. I've gone as little as 190. Some of that depends on riding style. Some of that depends on how much wind you're riding into for how long. So the mileage really varies. When I, when I ride like a sane person on my commutes, my 220 to 230 miles on a tank of gas. I just put regular in. I'm using Rotella for my oil. I don't notice any difference there, but I don't know that I would. It's my first bike. I know the clutch pull is, for me, fine. I never get fatigued, even off-road, pulling the clutch. Overall, it's just been a really, really good bike. I found it to be stable in the rain. I've still got the stock seat on it. People have always complained about the KLR seat. The uh, 2014 and a half and up have the improved seat. I like it. Other people, I'm six foot one, I'm 220 pounds. I've not found it an issue. My significant other has not found an issue. We don't ride far rides tandem though. But as a commuter, it's a great bike. Wish it had a little more power for passing purposes. Off-road, obviously I wish it was a little lighter. But you know, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about your skill level, how hard you work at it. I think we've all seen videos of guys riding this bike like it's a 250. Well, that's not me. So if you're looking to buy a KLR because of adventure, know that you're gonna need practice. You have to do a lot of it. Street practice too. I mean, like I said, I commute on this every day. People drive like assholes. So that's where I wish I had a little more get up and go sometimes. There are times where I, I wish I had a little more get out of trouble speed. Off-road, other than the weight, 
I haven't found any other shortcomings that, at my experience level, I can even talk about. As far as the 16 tooth off-road, I haven't noticed a problem with that. Again, I haven't done a lot of off-road on this thing, but I am in Florida. It's all flat. It's, I'm not going up and down hills and dealing with baby heads and all that stuff. I'm dealing with sand and dirt, but way more sand. And the sand, it's all about the damn tires and the size of your coconuts. So my advice if you're thinking about a KOR, be really honest about what you think you're most likely going to be doing with the bike. If you're looking for something that you can go on road trips on, you want a different bike. If you want something you can go on road trips on and go off road, you need a different bike and a bigger bike. And like an Africa Twin or a BMW or a KTM, arguably. Of course, you could buy three of these for one of those, but or two. In some cases, three. If you're going to be predominantly riding off-road and you're not going to be traveling that much and you're all about trail riding, you'd be better off with a 250. A 250 that you can throw some bags on and take a little weekend trip. But if you're looking for an all-rounder that's manageable, easy to handle, dead solid dependable, easy to maintain, the cost of using it is minimal. to be able to keep riding when the pavement ends as they say you're, you're nuts not to buy this bike it's a bike you can buy and keep forever no matter what else you add I'll be getting something I can tour on after this I'm not get rid of the KLR thanks for your time if there's something I haven't mentioned which undoubtedly there probably is just ask me in the comments. I'm getting caught up on all my comments this weekend as well. My apologies to those of you who have commented in the past and I took forever to get back to you on. I'm working on it. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good day.